The construction of the church began May 1st, 1915, and it was completed in October of 1915. The Orthodox Church in Berlin has had a lot of financial difficulties, but they're a very tough population. It's a place of rest, it's a place of beauty, it's God's temple. In any walk of life, that's our job, to keep our churches open. In the early part of the last century, about 1900, Berlin was a growing community with a large paper mill. Several Russians came to Berlin to develop a better life. So finally, about 1914, the bishop of the diocese of the Orthodox Christian Church met with the uh, local mill executives and the Brown Company were very good to their employees and felt that it was very important that the Russian population had a place of worship. They donated a piece of land at the foot of Mount Forest at a high point of Berlin. So the construction of the church began May 1st, 1915, and it was completed in October of 1915. Since that time period, the Orthodox Church in Berlin has had a lot of financial difficulties, but they're a very tough population. Here we are today, the church is still open, and it has a very faithful congregation. Been up here for 29 years now. So it's a beautiful place. I do a typical service every Sunday. We're open to anybody who wants to come, and as a community, we work together to keep our doors open for worship. Some people in this community in Berlin have never seen the inside of this church. And when they come over to visit for our meals, they're amazed how beautiful it is. See who we are, just enjoy the music without instruments, and just sit here for tranquility, sit here for your own personal prayer. We, we don't close the door to anybody. And if you want to find out more, there's plenty of people here to explain who we are. We're blessed who we have here now and the hardworking people that are our members here to keep us going. I'm a parishioner at the Holy Resurrection Orthodox Church in Berlin. It's a small parish, but it's an old one. Uh, the church is at least 100 years old. I appreciate the history of it and the longevity of the families here. I fit right in. I feel at home. As far as the challenges go that the parish faces here, it's a dwindling parish as far as the uh, population. Even though small, it's pretty active. We do ethnic events that invite and incorporate the community. We get the best cooks in town, I might say. People who have discovered that, they do come to our festivals and they enjoy themselves. You know, it shines up here, this little Orthodox church on top of the cliff here. It's a place of rest, it's a place of beauty, it's God's temple. If it closes, we would walk by it and just say, oh, Josh, uh, we should have did this, we should have done that, you know. Should have, would have, could have is the only expression. I believe as Christians, in any walk of life, that's our job to keep our churches open for those who want to be faithful to them, no matter what the denomination is. But the faithful do come and we, we commune together to keep our, our church open. It was 2014. We had a very busy summer that year. And I was working up on Goren Hill. We were doing construction work. My safety officer came up on the job and he said, Bill, I have to send you back to school. Your certifications are lapsing. I walked into the classroom and that was, that was it. That's all I remember. They said I, I passed out. It was cardiac arrest. My heart stopped. I was in a coma for five days. Towards the end, when I woke up from the coma, I just had these pictures of these cherub faces with wings. They were just faces told me I was gonna go back. I woke up and there was my sister from California, who was a cardiosurgical nurse and she was over me. And she said, just said, welcome back, brother. I was just very grateful. God had his hand right on. It wasn't my time at the time and he was just watching over me. Here on earth, we get worked up, but you know, you just go, go, go. It gets so hooked into the materialistic world. We forget who our creator was. He's always watching out for us. And basically, I think it was a time where he was telling me to slow down. 
this materialistic world of ours, we get trapped with it. Just be grateful for the time you have here on Earth. It could be short. You know, I was 59 years old, and I was, if it was for these people, I wouldn't be here talking to you. He is out there watching for us, you know, but you have to focus on it once in a while. You have to believe in it. You have to keep your faith strong in it. Come and worship or just see what we have here. Or sit here for tranquility. Sit here for your own personal prayer. We don't close the door to anybody. My background is as an attorney. I practiced law for about 35 years in Massachusetts. I retired to move up here. I now own a former dairy farm. I raised goats and chickens, and I turned it into an inn. As an Orthodox Christian, I don't feel at home in another church. So when I moved to northern New Hampshire, I had to have an Orthodox church within striking distance because I didn't want to be so far away that I never went. It's a small parish, but it's an old one. The church is at least 100 years old and I appreciate the history of it and the longevity of the families here, and I fit right in. Even though small, it's pretty active. We do some ethnic events that invite and incorporate the community. We just had a Greek and Russian festival. We got the best cooks in town, I might say. People who have discovered that, they do come to our festivals and they enjoy themselves. I will often give church tours here in the church uh, during those festivals to introduce people to the church and ask them questions, but we feed them well. We get people of all kinds and they're all welcome. We're not having these festivals for any more than the camaraderie that we can create and the connection with the community. People come who are interested and we provide a venue for them to learn about the early Christian faith that we are.